Hi, Dr. Mindy Curry here. I'm a naturopathic doctor and I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I have a home office here in Milwaukee. And I'm here today to talk to you about hibiscus tea and the medicinal benefits of hibiscus tea. And this is from the plant Hibiscus saptorifa. And it's basically, it, it's also a popular beverage that's known around the world. And it's called Agua de, Jam de Jamaica to, for a lot of people. And I think that just means water of hibiscus. But uh, basically it's got very, very high antioxidant value. And it's caffeine free. And it's a wonderful tea uh, and beverage that's been used in, in many places. Um, in, in fact, in many countries, specifically to lower hypertension. And there are actually several studies that back this up. Um, in one study that I read, only after only uh, taking two cups a day for one month, the participants in the non-placebo group had uh, a lowering of blood pressure around 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury. So this is really great for people who have especially um, borderline hypertension or lower hypertension and so this can move you a bit of the ways and it can also be used in conjunction with other natural things to lower your blood pressure more if you need it but uh, this can be an alternative to pharmaceuticals if you're kind of at the edge and you're not quite ready to take some of these pharmaceuticals this hibiscus tea has not been found to have at normal doses not have any adverse side effects. There's no electrolyte imbalances that you might find in other uh, blood pressure pharmaceuticals. Um, basically, there is a compound in this hibiscus tea that causes um, nitric oxide to be released from um, vascular endothelium. And this increases the kidney filtration and it gives it basically a diuretic effect that is anti-hypertensive. Um, so it also has other benefits for blood lipids in general as well. And that comes down to these anthrocyanidins, the red color in these lovely uh, little hibiscus flowers that is a very strong antioxidant and it fights free radical damage and that can decrease um, high blood um, lipids and high blood cholesterol as well so this will increase your high density lipoproteins it will decrease your LDLs, your bad LDLs and triglycerides and uh, so people also say that this is very helpful for uh, because of the anthrocyanidins and the antioxidants to fight the free radical damage you might if have from a, a very poor American diet with a lot of uh, junk food or even chemical exposures. Um, they also say this is anti-cancer. There are studies that have shown that the high antioxidant value in there actually kind of retards some of the cancer cell lines and that's really great. Um, several types of cancer cell lines have found this, this effect and that's showing early promise in laboratory settings. We'll see how that moves along in the future, but it's something that really couldn't hurt <laughs> um, most of the time. Um, this is also one that's been used uh, for obesity because it increases the metabolism and it helps fight insulin resistance. Um, that's when you eat a bunch of food and it, the sugar um, either goes straight into your cells or it lingers out in your blood vessels and wreaks some havoc. And the insulin is what you need to bring that into your cells so it's not wreaking havoc everywhere. And if you're having insulin resistance, you have high blood sugar and that that's very bad. So this is great for diabetics, controlling hypertension in diabetics, um, just controlling blood sugar and diabetics in, in general as well. Um, it certainly is a delicious beverage that can help with several different kinds of metabolic problems. Um, it also reduces, helps reduces the fat buildup in the liver. So it's good for fatty livers. And 
But on the caveat, just extremely high doses of this have there has been some ju- some suggestion that there is limit liver toxicity at extremely high doses, and that's one of those things where I got to remind people that uh, anything um, in the wrong dose can be toxic. Taking too much water can be fatal. So don't go overboard and just make this your entire life's mission to just drink Agua de Jamaica all day long. We're talking about normal doses, um, somewhere into three to four cup cups, not, not gallons of this every day. That would be ridiculous. Um, there's even some animal studies and some other um, traditional uses that have suggested that there's an antidepressant effect, and that's probably due to the high bioflavonoid, bioflavonoids as well. Um, there are some caveats, some um, precautions. Don't take this when you're pregnant, as it actually can induce menstruation or premature labor, possibly, um, as worst case scenario. So it, if you're having problems with your menstruation, that can be a great use, but maybe you don't want to have an induced menstruation when you're pregnant. Uh, it can also compound the effects of pharmaceutical hypertensive medications. So you don't want to, if you're already being fully treated with a pharmaceutical, add this on and maybe go a little too far into too low blood pressure. Um, but that, that's probably not gonna happen. If anything, a lot of times this could help benefit so you don't have to take multiple um, pharmaceuticals. But uh, they always say, warning with people who are already on pharmaceuticals for hypertension, this could make that a stronger effect. And to me, that's a good effect. Um, So other, there are some cytochrome P450 drugs you, that also use the same pathway through the liver. And um, so those drugs that go through that same pathway could be affected by this. You'd have to probably make sure your medications are checked through a physician that understands pharmaceuticals and their effects um, with herbs. Uh, let me see. Also, there's the uh, malaria medication chloroquine. I guess this can reduce the absorption of that too. So, a thing that could be <laughs> a problem for you. Basically, today we're going to take this tea. I mean, take these little flowers, these calyxes. Um, I want you to look at these a little bit more. They're just a little, a little lovely little flower, and they're flexible. You can get these uh, often in Mexican grocery stores. Um, You can also get these organically at uh, Mountain Rose Herbs, um, a really great company here in Oregon. And let me see. Basically, what we want to do is we want to start out with a cold, cold pot of water. We want about a cup per quart. You can make it stronger or less strong. And what I'm going for is basically a tea concentrate. This is a, a tea that I'm going to add with a lot of ice. This is basically an iced tea is what you want as the ultimate beverage. Um, you could drink this hot if you wanted to, but it's traditionally drink it up, had as an iced tea. So we've got this cold pot of water here. I'm going to put, um, I guess, a couple cups or a couple handfuls, in, in the case, of hibiscus flowers into this pot and turn that on. Okay, I'll turn that on and we'll wait for that to boil. I also want to mention that another fun thing we can do with the hibiscus tea once it's uh, a lovely concentrate is we can dye eggs with it and make some really exciting um, cocktail deviled eggs. Some very interesting colored deviled eggs. And uh, for that I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, watercress over here. So let's uh, get back to that tea. Let's watch this pot boil and uh, go on from there.
once it does. Basically, you want to um, get this hibiscus tea up to boiling and then turn it down on low or to a low rolling boil for about 10 minutes. And then we'll strain out those flowers and you'll have a, uh, and add some sweetener, some honey, some monk fruit. Traditionally, you can add quite a bit of sugar. I believe the, uh, the traditional recipe calls for um, a half cup of sugar per two quarts of uh, hibiscus tea, which is quite a lot of sugar. You could do a, a quarter cup of sugar, but I prefer to add a bit of monk fruit in there and some honey to make it more delicious and uh, not, not spike my blood sugar that much. Let's watch this pot boil. Oh. Okay, here we have it. Got some boiling. So let's uh, calm things down a little bit. Let that simmer. Give it a good stir. Look at how dark that's getting. That is some intensely red tea. Very burgundy, deep wine color. In fact, that's one wonderful thing about this, is its flavor is so intense and red, it, it could actually act as a wine substitute for somebody who's trying to get off of red wine and would like a flavor that is also intense. This would be a, a good beverage for a person like that to try to use as a crutch to get off of a stronger beverage. Let's just turn that down and let that sit for about 10 minutes longer at a low rolling boil and then it will be ready to um, go ahead and sweeten and remove the flowers. Okay, it's been 10 minutes on a low simmer and uh, we're ready to strain our concentrated this is definitely concentrated you're not going to want to drink this straight up it's very bitter I mean, well not bitter sour i guess sour is the term not bitter it's very sour until you sweeten it these flowers are not naturally extremely sweet they're actually naturally extremely sour and that's why you add all the sweetener to get to that place but that sourness is also part of the medicine that's where those anthocyanidins are and basically we're going to get that into a glass jar you want to basically put that into some glass pitcher or a glass jar large glass jar don't want to do that into plastic it will very much stain plastic and it will pull some plasticky flavor out which is nasty and probably also an endocrine disruptor what I'm using here is a little funnel that's got a, a sieve in it There are faster ways of doing this, but this is quite lovely in this olive jar. And start to see some of these lovely little calyxes of the hibiscus sadrifa. <laughs> and this is going to make a mess. You're going to want to not be wearing your <clears throat> your uh, 
beautiful white clothes. You're going to want to wear deep red clothes or black clothes, even better. Now I'm coming up to the point where I'm going to want to add in my sweetener because there's not much room left in the jar. Let's go ahead and move those out of the way. I've made a big mess, but that is what I do. And add a nice spoonful of monk fruit. Usually that's way too much, but uh, in this case, it's very sour and uh, I don't want to have to add too much honey. I'm going to add some honey too. I really don't want it to be too sugary. Maybe a quarter, quarter cup of honey or sugar. And the monk fruit just uh, brings that sweetness up without any really problems except for this big clump. And basically what I'm going to do finish filling that just a little bit more. I'm going to shut that lid and just let it be there as a concentrate in that jar. Let it cools down. Not bug it for a while kind of seal itself in there. And that's fine. That's your hibiscus tea. And what you want to do with that is put it on a big glass of ice. You want this. It's, see how dark it is? Oh, it's beautiful. It's just a very dark red, burgundy color. It's very wine colored. It's got some of those same sour aspects that a red wine would have. So you can see how this could be a really great wine replacement for a person in need of such a thing. Um, it's just a delicious beverage. A bit of sweetness. This is a very sour hibiscus tea otherwise. <clears throat> what I'm going to do as well, just for fun, is uh, color some eggs. Move this out of the way. <coughs> I'm going to take some of this remaining juice. Now these flowers do absorb quite a bit of the liquid. So you will lose some of your, your tea liquid. You can squeeze that out if you have a fruit press or you really want to use a a bag, a cotton bag, and press that out. Now for this, I'm going to want to, um, for one thing, get that fire up, get that back to boiling, I'm going to add some vinegar, white vinegar, or rice vinegar. And once I get that back up to a nice boiling temperature, shouldn't take too long. We will add some eggs. Hmm. This burner's pissing me too. Okay, let's add these eggs. Well, let's wash these eggs. <laughs> Be right back. These are some beautiful eggs from my partner's daughter's garden. She's got amazing chickens, a variety of interesting colors and shapes.
Let's just add these eggs into my hibiscus tea. And let them boil away. Lonely. Let's uh, grab one of these brown ones just to see. One more. Now what I'd like to do is turn these into doubled eggs, but uh, we'll get there. Okay, let's see what kind of madness is cooked up over here. These are kind of the tie dye of home dyed eggs. These were quite a few brown eggs, so they're not going to be quite as pretty as if I'd used a full on store bought white egg. Let's see what the difference is. You can get with a white egg often kind of a bluish or kind of a, a reddish tinge. I have to get these out of the faucet. It looks like the vinegar has taken off quite of that brown egg look, so they have quite the dye dye, tie dye effect. Those interestingly colored eggs. Let's uh, rinse those off and see what they look like. Okay, there they are. Let's compare those to our original egg colors. These were pretty brown, so they didn't change as drastically as a white egg would. But if you can see, you are getting a, a real nice kind of a blue egg look out of some of these. Now I'm going to take this up a notch. Got to give them a dunk. First, I'm going to take some of these shells off. Okay, now here's the fun part for me. I like to take the shells off the eggs and put them back into the tea and get tea eggs. My partner is a little more shy about the tea eggs, so we're going to give him one of those <laughs> shell eggs. Okay, we're pulling these out now, and look at them, they're a beautiful dark purple. That's all those anthrocyanidins I've been talking about. Oh, here's the one with the shell, and look at that dark blue color, or kind of slate blue color in this case. Definitely a grayish blue, interesting blue color on the shell. The rest of these just so dark. It's that beautiful, beautiful color, and that's going to make a really lovely deviled egg. We're going to have a burgundy deviled egg here. I think that's it. Now, this is not really great to drink anymore, but I think the plants would love it. I'm going to put that out in the garden. Okay, we're going to double these little guys. Let's cut into one and see what it's going to be like. Ah, here it is. Oh, look at that. Very beautiful. And that interesting, just dark purple. 
exterior. Here's where all your anthocyanins are. Look at this guy. Okay, so here he is. Looks pretty good. A little bit different from the brother here. It's been soaking in the tea. Definitely has a interesting marble look. Okay, now what I'd like to put in here is a bit of the Penzi's 4S Smoky uh, Seasoned Salt. It's a little bit of mustard and mayo. horrible sound. Here it is, some fresh garlic and a little bit of very finely chopped green onions. And this is my favorite uh, nice healthy chunk of watercress, fresh watercress from out in the, the creek. This looks like if you don't remember, watercress is a superfood, very delicious in sandwiches and things. And uh, we're going to need a fork. Mash all these things together. that spoon. Fill them back in. So watercress is a superfood. We're filling these little eggs back in with the watercress. The outside is this lovely hibiscus tea. Basically, you've almost got medicinal deviled eggs here. I'd call it medicinal deviled eggs. <coughs> Let's hope that the medical benefits of the hibiscus can reverse the effects of the cholesterol you're taking in from these eggs. I think with that and the watercress, you're probably pretty safe. And these make for wonderful conversation pieces at a party when you're having your hibiscus tea, which we're coming up to finishing right away. Okay, here we are. We've got some beautiful little deviled eggs that have been colored by a beautiful hibiscus tea. That's wonderful. I'm 
between the soak and the hibiscus tea, the watercress, the delicious raw garlic, little chopped bits of green onions. I put a bit of Penzi seasoning in there, the um, mustard and mayo. These are just delicious. I just wish you could taste one of these. Look at that color. That is such a delightful, just dark anthrocyanidin soak in these eggs. Those are some very delicious deviled eggs. Mm. Okay, here we are at the end and what we have is a concentrated hibiscus tea. And we're going to uh, open that up and pour that on just a big pile of ice. And it just spilled everywhere. This is a volcano of fun. So let's enjoy it. Ah. Oh. Oh, that's it. That that is exactly it. Mmm. It is so delicious. <laughs> We've got just this wonderful, wonderful, tart, sour, hibiscus flavor. It's such a red, beautiful color. Just the right amount of sweetness with that monk fruit and the honey. Don't need a ton of sugar at all. Mm. That's it. Make a mess. This is hibiscus tea. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> So don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I also have an office in Milwaukee.